welcome students welcome to this online session of operations research in this lecture we are going to study about the problem of dynamic program so let's look into detail so first of all we will look into the concept of dynamic program what is dynamic programming then we will look into the example one example based on the dynamic programming problem. and finally we will look into the another case which is called the probabilistic dynamic programming the example will be based on deterministic dynamic programming and then another branch of dynamic programming called probabilistic dynamic programming we will look into detail so let's start so what is dynamic programming dynamic programming is <coughs> the uh, technique which divides the problem into different stages and then we solve stage by stage right get the optimum solution so how do you approach the solution the first of all you will define the variables and then objective function as well as the constraints same as linear programming problem um, we will de decide about the decision variables right identify the decision variables constraints as well as the objective function then we will decide the stages stages of the problem the problem will be divided into different stages out of all the stages we will also decide the identify the states of the stages right <coughs> so based on the states we will also define the state variables in third step we will also define the recursive relationship now what do you mean by that it is the it is used for the optimal return function which permit computation of the optimal policy at any stage let's say for example based on the n plus 1 optimal policy right we will go recursive way to get the optimal policy of n stage clear yeah? after that we will make a tabular representation so that we can calculate the uh, optimum decision required at every stage possible and then at each stage getting the optimal decision value will reflects the entire problem decision making so the overall optimal policy <coughs> at at of the whole problem will be defined by the optimal policy of at the each stage and obviously you can get more than one optimal policy so let's look into an example so a company a firm has divided its marketing area into three zones so zone 1 zone 2 and zone 3 and the sales amount is dependent upon the performance of the or you can say the number of salesmen in that area now but what the company is doing they are collecting the data regarding the sales and the salesmen in that area over a number of years the information is summarized in the table about now next year what is happening is the company has to assign nine salesmen now what the problem is they have to allocate in such a way that the sales is maximum let's look into the data so here is the data <coughs> profit of three zones with respect to the number of salesmen is given here in the table right for example number of salesmen zero right so zone 1 zone 2 and zone 3 corresponding profit is given if you allocate number of salesmen like for example one in zone 1 the profit realized is 45 units or you can say 45000 rupees same way in zone 2 it is 45 and in zone 3 it is 50 now based on this given data the company wants to maximize the sale right by allocating the salesmen into the zones different zones so let's start with the here this given data is given uh, given data is written here right calculated here now based on this what we can do is we will write zone in the first row here that is 0 1 2 3 4 up to 9 clear in the same way for the zone 2 we will write the allocation of this salesman 0 to 9 right what is the next step we will write down the profits for zone 1 30 45 60 70 here 30 45 60 70 and likewise this second row as a function fx1 for fx2 this 35 45 52 we will write in this second column here clear what is the next step we will add 35 plus 30 that is 65 for this zone this zero number of sales in the same way in zone 2 one salesman 
and zone one zero salesman, we add forty five plus thirty as the maximum out. So thirty plus forty five is seventy five. Same with thirty plus fifty two eighteen, and likewise, we will do repeat the same process in each and every column here to get this triangle, right? For example, thirty five plus seventy is hundred and five, right? Hundred plus thirty is hundred and thirty, and likewise. Clear? So here we have got the return calculation. Now, <coughs> what we can do in the next step? In the next step, we will look into the maximum allocation. So how do we do that? Let's look look here only. Look diagonally. If you carefully look at the diagonal here for the zero salesman, it is sixty five, right? The return is sixty five. When you allocate one salesman. The maximum return is eighty, which is denoted here by star. In third, here if you see the maximum is ninety-five. Zero, one, two, three. For third, three number of salesmen, it is there are two cases of maximum output for the profit: hundred and five and hundred and five. For next diagonal, diagonally if you see here, it is hundred and fifty. Then we have 125. Then we have 135, right? And likewise. So what we have found here is for zero salesman number of salesman, the maximum return can be 65, right? For one it is 80. For two it is 95. For three it is 105. Two cases. How do you see these two cases? Two plus one that is three. Two zone two sales, two number of salesmen in zone one, and one salesman in zone two. It comprises of, or you can say, the output of hundred and five. In the same way, three salesmen in zone one and zero salesmen in zone two will also comprise of hundred and five return. That is how we calculate the return. In the same way, we have calculated the maximum return, and it is indicated by star here. So, what is the next step? We will write down the table in the tabular form. So how do you write it? This is the same table, right? So number of salesmen is zero to nine, zero one two three four five six up to nine, right? Now this sixty-five is the maximum return that we have written. That is sixty-five. I have written sixty-five here. That is the total profit out of these two combinations, zone one and. In the same way, for the number of salesmen one, the maximum. Return, or you can say the profit is eighty. For the second, it is ninety-five. Third, it is hundred and five. Then, for four number of salesmen, it is hundred and fifty. Right, and likewise, hundred and twenty-five, hundred and thirty-five, hundred and forty-three, fifty-four, and finally we have hundred and sixty-three. That is this total profit, which is a maximum. Clear? Now. Salesmen in zone two and one are the combinations here. If you see hundred and five, there are two cases of hundred and five. Three plus zero and two plus one. So that is what that is why I have written zero plus three and one plus two. In the same way for the seven number of salesmen, if you see here, there are two cases. One forty three means six plus one as well as four plus three. So that is what I have written here: four plus three and six plus one. Number of allocations of salesmen, number of salesmen in that zone, right? So that is why that is how we calculate salesmen in zone two plus zone one. Now let's look into the data of zone three. That is, we will do in the reverse way. Why reverse way? Because zero plus nine is nine, one plus eight is nine. We have to allocate nine number of salesmen in different zones. So in the reverse way, if we write Whatever the data we have got here, that is the data for the zone three. In the reverse way, 110, 110, 110, 102, 95, 82, 70, 60, 54, 40. That is what we have written here at the bottom. If you see 110, 110, 110, and likewise up to 40. Now, what is the next step? We add 65 plus 110. So that is the total profit out of three zones: zone one, zone two, and zone. So 80 plus 110 is 190. 95 plus 110 205. 105 plus 102 is 207, and likewise. 
So if you carefully see this table here, where do you have the maximum total profit? It is at 200. And so that is our answer. So optimal allocation, how do you do that? Optimal allocation of maximum nine salesmen can be done in such a way that zone two, if you zone, see the zone two, the allocation is one here, right? For zone one, the allocation is of three. Why we have looked into this one only? Four number of salesmen here? Because four plus five, because it has the maximum total profit of 210,000 of profit, right? So, out of nine, the five salesmen are allocated to zone three. Clear? And one to the zone two and three salesmen to zone one. So, in this way, we can solve the employee smoothing or you can say the resource allocation problem with the help of dynamic program. Another branch of dynamic programming, apart from deterministic programming, is a probabilistic dynamic programming. This topic we have already learned in decision theory. In decision three, the last topic was decision tree. Decision tree is the example of best example of probabilistic dynamic programming. So what do we do in decision tree? We, we know that the outcome of the decision is uncertain. Right? So what do we do? We try to get the probabilistic estimates of decisions. And whatever the outcomes are there, we do the probability estimates. So we have already explained in decision theory chapter about in detail about the decision tree, which is nothing but the probabilistic dynamic programming approach to solve the problem. Again, there are cases of finite and infinite decisions as well. <coughs> finite decision, in the case of finite decisions, you can definitely adopt the approach of decision tree analysis. Yeah. In this way, we have completed the dynamic programming uh, chapter or you can see the topic, specifically two topics are there, probabilistic dynamic programming, which is already covered in the decision theory. And in case of deterministic programming, we have looked into an example of resource allocation, or you can say employee smoothing. Here we took the example of salesman uh, allocation to the according zone, so that the company can realize the maximum profit. Thank you.